All right, so um, I picked this uh, rather ambitious title, but um, I'm not trying to uh, make anybody uh, suddenly discover the, the meaning, or a deeper meaning for life or anything like that, but hopefully maybe um, think about biology in a slightly different way. And to start off with, we have to ask this kind of um, easy-sounding easy question of what is life? Like, What is the difference between, say, a rock and a living thing, even if that rock is made of mostly X living things? And it's a harder question to answer than you might think, because if you try and come up with one definition, it might work for animals, but not for plants, or it might work for plants, but not for bacteria and viruses. And so if you try and come up with an uh, overall definition of the shared characteristics of all life that would also work for alien life, well then one definition that is the best one that I know of is that um, life is the ability to self-replicate, the ability to make copies of yourself. And you can do this by budding off cells, by producing seeds, laying eggs, or having babies. They're all, these are all making copies of yourself. Um, Erwin Schrodinger in his famous Dublin um, lectures, What is Life?, um, approach this from a uh, physics and chemistry point of view, trying to think, how could this, how could life, how could something as complicated as life be encoded chemically? And Watson and Crick cited um, Schrodinger as part of the inspiration for them when they started to try and solve the structure of DNA. And they did solve the structure along with others and um, won the Nobel Prize for this. And basically what they found, and you possibly saw this before, is this double helix. So it's this winding helical pattern of two strands. So it's a double helix and it's held together with these um, bonds, these horizontal uh, base pairs across the middle. And it's a secret of life in a simple sense, and they call it the secret of life, but one sense is that um, it does code for many of our characteristics. So height variation, for example, is one of these characteristics that's influenced by your genetics, but also things like the color of your hair, the color of your eyes, um, but also much more complicated things. It makes your head go at the right end and your arms grow in the right place. So this is all encoded in your DNA. And lots of other very, very complicated things like the structure of your brain and the ability to learn. And so these things are really, really complicated, and they're so complicated that more than 60 years after, or about 60 years after having the structure, more than 10 years after having the human genome sequence, we still don't fully know how this very simple molecule can encode these very complex functions. But there's another way in which you can think of this as the secret of life. And Watson and Crick wrote this sentence, quite cheeky sentence in their paper. It has not escaped our notice that the specific pairing we have postulated immediately, immediately suggests a copying mechanism. So the pairing thing that they have is those horizontal lines in the, the DNA double helix. And what you see, if you kind of break it down into um, this simple version, we just a few things you can see about it. First of all, we just have four kinds, which is of four colors. And if you look at it for long enough, you'll see that you always have the specific pairings. So you always have A and T, or yellow and green, and you always have C and G. And this is a really, really simple rule. You can explain this to children, and I have explained this to children, so I know it works, because um, I went into my uh, son's class of six and seven-year-olds, and we talked about this. And so if you, and if you can see in terms of how this might work, how this suggests a copying mechanism, is if you pull away one complete side, then you can, just by seeing that this is yellow, you know that it must go with green. And so it goes like that. And so in the cell, the DNA gets pulled apart. But in the classroom, what I did was I brought in a model of DNA made with building blocks, and we pulled it apart. And I made them look and say, look, you've got two different things here, and give one half to each side of the classroom. And so with the simple rule that they had um, helped to figure out, in fact, it was one boy in the class who spotted it and said it, I got them to fix the DNA I'd given them. So I said, just fix it, use that rule, the yellow and, yellow and green and red and blue rule, and go ahead, take your different molecules and come back, and they come back with this, which is two identical copies. And so, and so you start out with, you split the DNA, and you build it using the simplest rule, um, and you come back with identical copies. So DNA can make copies of itself. And if we consider um, life to be the ability to make copies of yourself, then DNA is alive and it is the basis for life. And um, the really nice moment for me was in the classroom when I said to them, so will it work again? So if I do this again, I've now got two copies. If I pull it apart again, will it work again? And there was one um, quite quiet girl in the class who very quietly but confidently said yes. And I just said to her, so how long will it keep working for? And she just said, forever. <laughs>